ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಿಭಕ್ತಿಯಾಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯಜಾತರ ಮುನಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಾರಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿತೃಣಾಯೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋ ದೈಕಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಿಭಕ್ತಿಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯಜಾತರ ಮುನಿ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯೇನೆ ಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋ ದೈಕಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಸೊ ವಿ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಶುಪಡಿ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ನಂಬರ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಒರುವನ್ ಅಡಿಮೈ ಕೊಳ್ಳುಂ ಪೋದು ಗೃಹಿಣಿಕ್ಕೆನ್ನೇ ಆವಣಿಯೋನೈ ಎಳುದುವದು ಆಹಿನಂ ಪಣಿಶೈವದ ಗೃಹಿಣಿಕ್ಕಿರೇ ಅದು ಪೋನೇ ನಾಂ ವಿರಾಟ್ಟಿಕ್ಕಿ ಅಡಿಮೆಯಾಯಿರಕ್ಕೂ ಪಡಿ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ವಿತ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಹೌ ದಿ ಜೀವಾತ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವಿಯಂಟ್ ಟು ದಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಗಾಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ of course we perform sharanagati to the lord shriman narayan only but when we perform this sharanagati automatically we become subservient to the <coughs> goddess lakshmi or shri so that is very very beautifully explained with a with an analogy which actually is related to not the current era so it is related to the era that was prevailing probably about 100 years or 150 years ago because he says oruvena oruvan adimai kollum podu grihini kennanne aavaniyolai eluduvadi so in those days there was the tradition or practice of what is known as bonded labor so i am sure uh, your uh, aware of this uh, tradition because we hear that in america kindly don't mistake me if i use any word that is not very much uh, <laughs> that may be a little bit out of place so in those days in america we understand that there was a practice so there was this practice of trading the dark people uh who are uh, probably tribal sir i don't know what <clears throat> how you term them nowadays so i understand that uh, using the word black is not it's a derogatory term nowadays so africans yeah so kindly that's why i said kindly excuse me if i use any word that is inappropriate because i am not familiar with the terminology or that is prevailing there so until from what little i remember until the t- time of abraham abraham lincoln i think it was like that uh, i am not very familiar with american history so they were actually traded like commodities which is a very cruel practice but in india there was this <coughs> uh what is that uh, tradition or uh, i don't they call it a tradition the practice of bonded labor in the sense that whenever there was a financial crisis among some classes they used to give a written statement or a written bond or something like that where the servant would be engaged with the master for a particular time of period of time so 5 years 10 years or something like that but 
one very important aspect that is to be known is of course in some films during the 60s 70s and 80s they have shown that these bonded laborers were greatly exploited so everywhere in every culture or every tradition or in every country there have been exploitations to a particular extent but during the time of pillidoka acharya i am sure that there was no such exploitation but the practice of bonded labor was there which is known as avaniyole eluduvadi which means they used to prepare a document and give it to the person that this person will be a, your laborer or your servant for a particular period of time but in whose favor <laughs> to put it in a legal language in whose favor this bond was executed <laughs> i'm putting it in a <laughs> highly legal language so in whose favor the bond was executed the bond was executed in favor of the head of the family generally a male but who will give him day to day who will allocate work to him day to day in the household it is actually the wife of the head of the family who will allocate all the duties to him so she may tell him you please sweep this place you please mop this place <clears throat> so he will not be actually directly serving the head of the family but he will be a <clears throat> he will not be serving the head master he will be head, serving the head mistress or the wife of the <clears throat> head of the family so pillaloka acharya very beautifully says grihini kennanne aavaniyole eluduvadu aahilam panishayivadu grihini kire do he is not bonded or bound to the main woman of the family head woman of the family but he serves her only in all capacities in the sense he mops the floor he will wash the vessels if it was allowed he may wash the clothes or he may clean the places he may assist in farming so all the day to day duties will be allocated to him only by the lady of the family so he will actually serve her directly rather and only indirectly he will serve the head of the family that is the male person similarly he says adu pole nam piratikki adimeya irukkum padi similarly though lord narayana is our sharanya lord narayana is under whom we seek refuge but automatically we become subservient to the goddess shri or lakshmi also without any uh, preconceived notions without any inhibitions without any conditions etc so that is what manavana mamni beautifully comments he says ishvara sheshatva matram oliya viratikkum shesham innum idam ஜீவாத்மாஸ்ரீ <coughs> through the supreme god shri or lakshmi is it indicated only by means of this these syllables auma or is it indicated otherwise also it is indicated otherwise also and that fact is being represented by the three syllables akara ukara and makara which are arranged in that order so he says adavad lokatine oruvan தாசதாசிகள்ிக்கொள்ளும்ிக்கொள்ளும்ிக்கொள்ளும்ிக்கொள்ளும்ிக்கொள்ளும்ிக்கொள்ளும்ிக்கொள்ளும்ிக்கொ
head of the house who is a male person ayirukkachaideyum adimai tholil seivade grihinikire but the main person of the house in those days he will be engaged in his studies in his anushthanams they are called as panchakala parayanas so all the five times periods of time they will engage they will be engaged in spiritual and religious practices so how can they devote time to allocate some work to this servant so it is always the lady of the house that is why it is said grihini griha mutchyate so at most importance is given in the indian culture in especially in shri vaishnava culture to the lady of the house so even when all the auspicious events are performed suppose there is a house house warming ceremony the grah pravesha so when the tara bala as it is called when the when the good stars are prevailing the day on which the good stars that are favorable are prevailing on that day all the auspicious events have to be performed so with regard to whose star the auspiciousness is calculated it is calculated with regard to the lady of the house important then her husband's star also the anukulya or the favor favor favorableness rather he is calculated with regard to the male also so all the festivals <coughs> have women as their main components all the auspicious festivals and even apastamba the great sage whose <coughs> whose instructions we are following even today at least in letter <laughs> probably not in spirit or at least for ritual say he says after mentioning all the rituals that are performed that are to be performed in the marriage etc in all auspicious events he says astriye bhya pratiyera if there are any <laughs> omissions or commissions and omissions <coughs> the shastras have to be performed as per the senior women's instructions that's what apastamba says <laughs> said apastamba says <coughs> so you can understand the importance attached to women whereas in western culture what happens kindly excuse me if i am very frank even today women are seen more as subservient to men they are also i don't know whether it is right to mention it or not they are seen as objects of enjoyment and uh, i understand in a particular religion which is prevalent in the gulf and of course everywhere in the world especially in islam that's what i, I have understood i may be wrong kindly excuse me some in islam there is a school of thought which considers that women do not possess atmas or souls so that's what i have heard i don't know whether it is authentic or not so they are degraded to such a level whereas in our our tradition we give utmost importance to women and we say grihini grihamuchate it is the lady of the house who is verily the house itself and therefore she is worshiped as the lakshmi of the house so we have several uh, auspicious events in which first all the sumangalis are the uh, <coughs> women are worshiped first and then only all the good auspicious uh, activities are conducted so it's a very big tradition very unique tradition very wonderful tradition which is actually exposed right from the supreme lord narayana himself aayirakkachaideyum adimai tholil seivade grihinikire adu pole ishwara shesham ennum alavai yuvakaram sollitte aahiram maam viratikki adimai aayirukkum padi engai so do the akara mentions that the supreme lord is the sharanya or the person who gives refuge to the divatma it goes without saying it is understood beyond any doubt that we are subservient to the supreme goddess lakshmi also 
So there is no <coughs> difference of opinion of any person in that regard. So that is what he says in this. So what does this all suffice to say? All this suffices to say that there is no existence of the Supreme Lord and the Supreme Lord Goddess Shri without each other. So that is why I mentioned in the earlier class, it is known as in technical jargon associated with philosophy, it is known as in, invariable concomitance. Or samavyapti, without the Supreme Lord, there cannot exist Goddess Lakshmi. Without Goddess Lakshmi, there cannot be the Supreme Lord. So, to put it in a very mundane language, there are two faces of the same coin. So, a coin can never have a single face. <laughs> it has to have, even assuming that a coin has one, one plain face, there has to be a face. There cannot be a single faced coin, it has to be two faces. And then he beautifully gives one more example Prabhayum, Prabhava, Nayum. Pushpatyam manatyam pole. So can you separate the rays of the sun from the sun? Can you separate the fragrance of the flower from the flower? Though we know that they are different, they are distinct, that is the fragrance is different, is distinct from the flower. They can never be separate, separated. So in the Tarka Shastra or Nyaya Shastra, we call it as Samvaya Sambandha. That is, they cannot be separate from, separated from each other, which is known as inherence in the technical language, <coughs> which is very beautifully mentioned by a great professor called Hiriyanna. He says, they are separate but not separable. <laughs> Though they are separate, they are not separable. So, where there is the relationship of inseparability, it is also considered to be aikya or unity or unification of both the tattvas. So, when you look at them as tattvas, ultimately they may merge into one. When you look at them as vyaktis or individuals, then they are separate. So you can see it as a tattva or, a, or the supreme entity, which is beyond all worldly things. Then the view is different. You can see them as vyaktis or individuals also, which is also allowed and which is also permitted, which is within the framework of our philosophy. So both, both, both the views are correct and they are not contradictory to each other, depending upon how you see it. So you may see your mother as the goddess divine because it said Matra Deva Uva. You can see her as your mother. You can see her as a woman. So you can see her in many different, from different points of view, but they all converge in one individual. Similarly here also, you can view, view them as supreme entities or what we call as Paratattvas, or you can view them as Vyaktis also from a different point of view. And then he says, Ahaicherti Uddeshyamai Vittadi. So this unity of the goddess, God and goddess, that is Lord Narayana and Lakshmi or Sri, is very much desirable, is very much unique and needed. It is actually Mandatorily needed, we can say like that. So this is commented upon like this. Aha pirittini lailai indri in the apratak siddhya apratak sthitya bha sthitya bha in the apratak sthitya bha vatak irand drishtan tammaruli chayhira So as I said, they are not separable. But they, are, they may be separate. They are separate, they, but they are not separable. But at some stage, they may become, they may be seen as a single entity also. 
അതാവത് പ്രഭയും പ്രഭാ പ്രഭാ പ്രഭയ്ക്കും പ്രഭാവാലക്കും പൃഥക് സ്ഥിതി ഇല്ലാതെ ഇല്ലാതാപ്പോലവും പുഷ്പത്തക്കും പരിമണത്തക്കും പൃഥക് സിദ്ധി ഇല്ലാതാപ്പോലവും എൻകൈ അനന്യാരാഘവേണ അഹം ഭാസ്കരേണ പ്രഭായഥ അനന്യാഹിമയാ സീത ഭാസ്കരേണ പ്രഭായഥ വെരി ബ്യൂട്ടിഫുൾ സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെന്റ് സെയിം സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെന്റ് ഈസ് മെൻഷൻ ബോത്ത് ബൈ ലോർഡ് രാമായൺ ലോർഡ് സീത ഇൻ ദി രാമായണ ഇൻ ഡിഫറെന്റ് കോണ്ടെക്സ്റ്റ് സോ ഇൻ ദി സുന്ദരകാണ്ട വെരി വെരി ബ്യൂട്ടിഫുൾ ഈവെന്റ് അക്കർസ് So Ravana comes from his palace and he addresses Sita and asks him, Why don't you become my wife? So if you see the <clears throat> amount of prosperity and property I have, it is much more than what is compared to Rama's. Then if you see how, how much of prowess I possess, it is much more than Rama's. Rama's. so in all respect i outshine rama why are you so so much enamored about that ordinary human being that's what he says and when we read the different novels and other other uh, modern literature many a times especially in the western countries once again don't mistake me <coughs> women marry men because they have much prosperity because they have lot of property lot of money etc that's what i have read in many of the novels not only in west but in india also that is the case <clears throat> but sita says shakya lobhaitum naham aishwaryena dhanenava അനന്യാരാഘവേണാഹം ഭാസ്കരേണ പ്രഭായഥ ഐ എം നോട്ട് ഗ്രീഡി സോ യു കനോട്ട് ഷോ മേ ഷോ മീ സം സം ഓബ്ജക്ട്സ് ആർ എൻറ്റിറ്റീസ് യു കനോട്ട് സേ ഷീ സേസ് രാവണ സേസ് സിക്സ് തൗസൻഡ് വിമൻ വിൽ അസിസ്റ്റ് യു ആൻഡ് ദേ വിൽ ആക്ച്വലി ഡു ആൾ സോർട്ട്സ് ഓഫ് സർവീസസ് ടു യു ആൻഡ് ഹീ സേസ് ഐ ഹാവ് ദിസ് മച്ച് ഓഫ് മണി ദാറ്റ് മച്ച് ഓഫ് മണി ഐ ആൻഡ് ഐ വിൽ take you around in the pushpaka vimana to all the places on earth or even beyond earth as they used to go so uh, actually ravana's concern seems to be genuine when he says see rama is nobody before me why are you enamored of him so when his words are steady when the words he utters are so yes we feel yes correct but then we when we read the words reply given by sita then we can understand oh no this is the thing so she says shakya lobhaitum naam aishwaryena dhanena va you cannot actually show me these ordinary things like ornaments or many people who will uh, uh, this prosperity <coughs> then all the uh, what uh, is that uh, properties that, that you possess and other things and you cannot actually enamor me of that because i am not enamored me of, of those things because ananya raghavena hum bhaskarena prabha i belong to lord rama and nobody can separate her me from her him so even if you have 10 times the prosperity you have i will not care for it i cannot i cannot part with rama because i am part of you <coughs> and rama also says the same thing ananya himaya sita bhaskarena prabhayata similarly sita is not different distinct from me just like the rays cannot be separated from the sun but they have not talked to each other in the middle before they give these two statements which is how the internal chemistry works between lord rama and god sita who are none but these two that is lord narayana and vishnu so that is why in the brahmakrta rama stava or the brahmas stava or the stotra addressed by brahma to rama he says 
Sita Lakshmi hi Bhavan Vishnu. Very beautiful. And very, I can, I can go on for one hour regarding that only. Even in the beginning, in the middle, in the Yuddha Kanda, Ravana also partially realizes that Rama is Lord Narayana himself and no one else. But that spark of goodness is once again done away with by the badness, by his Ahankara Rajoguna. So when Kumbhakarna is killed, Ravana is so sad, then he actually exclaims, Yasya Vikramama Sadhya Rakshasa Nidhanangata Tammanye Raghavam Viram Narayana Manamayam How beautifully the statement has come out, come out from him. Yasya Vikramama Sadhya Rakshasa Nidhanangata Tammanye Raghavam Viram Narayana Manamayam How is it possible that so many Rakshasas who could, who could win over Indra, who could defeat Indra without any problem, who could defeat all the other demigods, Kubera, etc., Varuna, Agni, all the demigods. But all these demons, having gone to Rama, have lost their lives. Therefore, I feel this Rama is none other than Lord Narayana himself. That's what Ravana himself says. But that realization is one day, once again cowed down by his result. Then Mandodari says, Ravana's wife, after Ravana is killed, she comes and sees the body of Ravana. And then she sees Ravana, Rama. Immediately, she has the divine vision of Lord Narayana. She says, Tamasaf paramodha ta shankha chakra gadadharaha Srivatsavaksha nityaish nitya shrihi adayyashashvato dhruvaha How beautiful. When, he sees, when she sees Rama, she says, Tamasaf paramodha ta He is beyond Tamas, Rajas and Tamas which is actually what Madhu and Kaitabha represent, which is what Ravana and Kumbhakarna represent. And he is the supreme creator, Shankha Chakra Gadadharaha, who sports Shankha Chakra and Gada, and Srivatsa Vakshaha, who possesses the Srivatsa Chinna in his, on his chest, Nitya Shrihi, who is eternally associated with Shri or Goddess Lakshmi, and Ajayaha, he cannot be defeated by anybody. He is eternal and eternal and eternal. Shashwata Dhruva. And it is also mentioned that when Tara, the wife of Vali, sees Rama, she also realizes that he is Lord Narayana. Only. So she prostrates before him. And Vali also realized before he asked, he gave up his life. So such a beautiful... Uh, all these are such beautiful events that we come across in Ramayana. So that is why Mandodri is given a very big place among the uh, among the chaste women of India. That is why Ahalya, Draupadi, Tara, Sita, Mandodri, Tatha, Panchakarya, Panchakanya, Smare, Nityam, Sarvapapa, Pranashanam, when the Panchakanyas, these five are the greatest women Ahalya, Draupadi, Tara, Sita, Mandodari, Tatha. Though Ahalya might be seen as a woman of loose character, no, it's not like that. So these are the divine women whom we should all remember every day to rid ourselves of our sins. So why Mandodari is given such a divine place, such an exalted place? She could see Rama and realize and have the darshan of Lord Narayana himself when he saw Rama. When she saw Rama. So anyway, <clears throat> Ananya Himaya Sita Bhaskarena Prabhayatha, that's what he says. Hmm. Yudha Kanda, he says, Vishuddha Trishudo Keshumai Chili Janakat Majat. And then, end of Prabhaya Prabhavan Gale, the fallen of Arabha. 
ஆங்களைப் போலே இவர் இருவர்க்கும் பிரதக் சித்தி இல்லை என்னுமிடம் இருவர் வாக்காலும் சொல்லப்பட்டதிலே பிரசூனம் புஷ்யந்தி மபி பரிமலர்த்திம் ஜிகதிஷு என்கிறபடியே ஈஸ்வரனை புஷ்பஸ்தானே ஆகவும் விராட்டியை பரிமணந்தானே ஆகவும் பட்டரருளிச் செய்கையாலே புஷ்ப பரிமணங்களுக்கும் போ புஷ்ப பரிமணங்களுக்குப் போலே இருவருக்கும் பிரதக் சித்தி இல்லை என்னுமிடம் அர்த்தாத் சித்தம் அனதர் எக்ஸ்ட்ரீம்லி வண்டர்ஃபுல் ஸ்தோத்ராஃப் காடஸ் லக்ஷ்மி இஸ் தி ஸ்ரீ குணரத்ன கோஷா விச் வி ஆல் ஹேவ் டு என்ஜாய் இட் இஸ் சச் எ ட்ரெஷர் ஆஃப் நாலேஜ் அபவுட் ஸ்ரீ அண்ட் தி எக்ஸ்பிரஷன்ஸ் ஆர் சோ யூனிக் சோ டிவைன் யூ கேன் நெவர் ஃபைண்ட் தீஸ் டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் எக்ஸ்பிரஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் இஃப் ஐ டாக் அபவுட் ஸ்ரீ ஸ்ரீ குணரத்ன கோஷா ஐ கேன் டாக் டாக் ஃபார் for probably 2 or 3 months so much of information is there <laughs> so beautifully it has been uh, depicted and mentioned all these we call this as bhavas these bhavas cannot be found anywhere else in sanskrit literature or for in for that matter though i have studied little bit of english literature formally i can very safely say this type of expressions or bhavas are not available in any other language in any other culture not because we are belong to this culture from an objective point of view also because nowhere in in any other philosophy that does not mean that we be, be little other philosophies we respect all the philosophies for their value but this type of worshiping together a god and goddess supreme god in islam you have only one allah or something like that i don't think his consort or somebody or his divine power power is mentioned anyway i don't know i have not heard and in christianity also i don't know whether because there we mention about the messenger of god jesus as the messenger of god and i read every day the some in the whatsapp group somebody sends many psalms from the bible which are very very nice and very beautiful uh, expressions are there but this type of expression where you have the supreme lord and lordess how they are together the the divine expressions about the lordess as the mother divine that i think does not ex- exist in any other philosophy therefore we celebrate the uni- uniqueness of this without belittling me belittling any other philosophy so in shri guna ratna kosha he says tavas paresha adisham sprishati kamale mangala padam avedam no padhe rupanipatitam shri rasiyatah prasunam pushyanti mapi parimadhim jigadishu achaivan tvadevam swadatai dikashchit kavayate incidentally the works of parashara bhatta are extremely great of an extremely unique quality and uh, if we have time and if you are <laughs> interested after mumukshupadi we can study the shriranga rajasthava and shri gundapta kosha we can read it together because in shriranga rajasthava he actually from a little bit uh, my very 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 little knowledge about technology and you have a virtual reality augmented reality etc he actually creates a walk through of shrirang so in the purva shataka it's fully the beautiful exposition of the beauty of shrirang the right from the kaveri river then the um, beautiful uh, gardens that existed around shrirang then as a person comes from outside how the gardens are beautifully there which are the trees that are there in the garden kadalava kula jambu pugama kanda kandha dravasa sarasamina antara sahya kanyam so very beautiful then how the greatness of kaveri river then how one enters into the gopuras then how one enters the temple of shirangam i am sure keshav das ji would thoroughly enjoy that <laughs> because he has been in shirangam for so many years and we have also visited several times then which is the first sanidhi or the fifth first sanctuary to be 
seen, then the second second sanctorum, then the third sanctorum. Then ultimately you go to the Ranganatha and have his worship. Then from there you come in the Pradakshina way and go to the Thayar Samidhi or the <coughs> sanctum of the goddess divine. Then like that very, very beautifully he has described the entire Sri Ranga uh, temple. And then the Uttara Shataka is fully about its, its philosophical significance. So I don't think such a unique work like Sri Ranga Rajasthava exists anywhere in any other language or any other philosophy because the first thing is a walkthrough which actually is like a virtual reality or augmented reality as you call it in the Uttapurva Shataka that is the first symptom and then in the Uttara Shataka he explains beautifully the philosophy of the uh, Kshetra, Shiranga Kshetra so the 156 acres is the area of the Sriranga temple. Then what is the philosophy of the Sapta Prakaras? Why not, why not eight or why not so six? So why Sapta Prakaras? Then uh, three outside, four inside. Then why this particular uh, sanctum is placed in this particular place? And then what is the greatness of the Vimana? So it is so he says, Prapadye Pranavakaram Bhashyam Rangamiva Param. Parasya Brahmano Etrasheshitam. It is a Pranavakara Vimana. Why it's called Pranavakara? Why it should not be in another shape? All these things are very beautifully explained in the form of poetry, beautiful poetry. In the Shirangaradastava, in the Uttarashatka. And then to augment that, he actually has authored the Sri Gunaratna Kosha, which is the <clears throat> jewel box to literally translate it Sri Guna Ratna Kosha means the jewel box housing all the jewels which are the divine qualities of Goddess Sri. <laughs> How meaningfully he has given the name even the name Sri Guna Ratna Kosha is also so wonderful because it is the <coughs> <coughs> Jewel box which actually houses all the <coughs> unique uh, emeralds, sapphires, diamonds, etc., which are not physical, but these unique emeralds, sapphires, diamonds are the divine qualities of Goddess. Also, that is why he has named it as Sri Gunaratna Kosha. So there he says. Tavas Parishadisham Sprishati Kamale Mangalapadam Tavedam Nopadhe. Very beautiful. This takes a lot of time to explain. I will explain only the currently relevant. He says, Pushpatayam Manatayam Pore. That is just as the fragrance of the flower cannot be separated from the flower. Similarly, Prasunam Pushyanti Mapi Paribalat Dim Jigadishuhu. So, just as it was mentioned, suppose I want to have the flower. Can I have the flower with devoid of its fragrance? No. <laughs> Always the fragrance is eternally associated with the flower. So, suppose I want to have the flower. Fragrance will also come. So, I, if I want to have the Lord, Goddess Lakshmi will automatically come. Or if I want to have only the fragrance, then flower also has to be there. Without the flower, how can the fragrance come? So if I suppose I go to Goddess Lakshmi alone, Lord Narayana will also automatically come. So ah, So they can never, never, never be separated. <coughs> so then he says, ah, I So this concomitants are always being together. It's not coincidental. It is very much required. And always it is going to be there. It's not pure coincidence. In the Apratak, in the Pratak, Siddhya Bhavatta Yanu Varitta Kundu Icher Titana Kit Uddeshyamai Tarek Kattina Badiyer Vichy Hirar Ai Cherti Uddeshyamai Vittadi Inni Icherti Uddeshyam in the Ade Yver Halei Tanitani Virumbuhei. Uddeshyamani Indrapadi 
இவரையும் கிரித்து விரும்பினால் ராவண சூர்ப்பணிகளுக்கு போலே அதர்த்தமே பலிக்கும் எங்கை பலிக்கும் இத்தனை இருவரையும் பத்தினாதிரே ஸ்ரீ விபீஷணாழ்வானை போலே வாழலாவது சோ இன் கேஸ் ஐ ஜஸ்ட் மென்ஷன் தட் ஃப்ரம் அ வெரி நோபல் பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் வியூ தட் இஸ் சப்போஸ் ஐ வாண்ட் லார்ட் நாராயண ஓன்லி ஸ்ரீ ஆல்சோ வில் கம் அவுட் ஆஃப் அவர் ஓன் கிரேஸ் that is at a higher level but if well in a lower level in a very ordinary sense if a person wants to attain the lord alone or if a person wants to attain the goddess alone then definitely he is bound to have problems so he says iru varium pirith virambinal ravana shurpane kenakku pole anarthame palikkum so if a person wants to individually attain them then he is bound to distract himself anartham is distraction like whom ravana shurpana kelakku pole so ravana wanted to be associated with sita devi alone due to which he had to attain distraction Shurpanaka wanted to attain Rama alone, due to which he attained destruction. <clears throat> that is why Sita says in the Ramayana, Tena Maitri Bhavatu, Vidita Sahi Dharmagyaha, Sharana Agata Vatsalaha, Tena Maitri Bhavatu, Even if you want to have friendship with him, he is ready. so not that you should go with the sharanagati only you not get you should surrender to him only and even ramayana in the vibhishana sharana rama in the vibhishana sharanagati lord rama says mitra bhave na sampraptam natyajeyam kathanchana so vibhishana says am sharanya sharanagatam what is that sarva loka sharanyaya raghavaya mahatmane nivedayata mam khitram vibhishana upasthitam so vibhishana actually expresses his surrender only to rama but rama how does he answer this surrender he says mitra bhavena sampraptam natyajeyam kathanchana even if a person comes with a proposal for friendship i am ready to i am ready to accept him. he says i it's not that I, i have such ego that he should come to me with the surrender only with the sense of surrender only even if he comes to me with the sense of friendship it is both of them are in, on, a, on an equal keel i am ready to accept him. and he says dosho yasya pitasya syaati satame etat agarhi even if he has several fallacies several faults he has committed several sins i am ready to accept him and he says further he says anainam harishreshtha dattamasya bhayam maya vibhishano va sugriva yadi varavana svayam he says to sugriva bring the bring vibhishana by all means because i have given abhaya to him not only vibhishana even if rama comes with a <coughs> with a proposal of friendship i am ready to accept him so such is the greatness of the supreme lord that he does not always look for a person who surrenders to him he is also ready to accept anyone though all of them are never equal to him in any respect he is ready to accept the friendship so that is why in the navaveda sambandha you have the mitra bhava also <laughs> so sakha he say sakhyam which is mitra bhava or friendship so even if i want to have friendship with the supreme lord yes he accepts it so that is why he says mitra bhavena sampraptam natyaje kathanchana etc so ultimately iru varayum pattinadire shri vibhishana alvane pole vaalalavadi so only if we have 
the attitude of sharanagati towards both of them we will attain fulfillment like vibhishana so he says that the next sutra we will is a totally different topic he goes to the next uh, subject so we will stop here any questions phone vandukilla Oh, sir, sir. So, what number sutra did we finish? Uh, sorry, what number sutra did we finish at? So, we have finished at forty-seven. Forty-eight is idile jaturthi erikkadiyam is the forty-eight thing, right. which is the uh, totally different topic. So, right. that we will do in the next class. Right. So, any questions? So I mean, I just wanted to ask, um, but it probably it would be too much. But um, I wanted to find out if you could elaborate a little bit about what is pancha parayanam. What is the practice of pancha parayanam? What is what is the meaning of pancha kala parayanam? So it's like five times a day, one does parayanam. So oh, what exactly do Sri oh. Vaishnavas do during those five times a day? Yeah, it is five times a day. Abhigamana, Idya, Swa. So five, five is like this. One is so the Panchakala Parayana. The five times is two Sandhyas. That is the two uh, twilight. Twilight. That is sunrise and sunset. Then two Chikalas. That is the midnight and noon. And then. any time the devotee wants to worship so these are the five times when the worship has to be performed that is one one way of defining it another way of defining it is abhigamana idya swadhyaya and two more things i don't remember and do you remember it keshavdas ji abhi upadana abhiga abhigamana upadana idya swadhyaya yoga swadhyaya okay. yoga yoga sorry yoga, yoga. Yes. so abhigamana idya swadhyaya abhigamana upadana idya swadhyaya and yoga yes so abhigamana idya or the abhigamana is the morning puja idya is the noon puja then along with that swadhyaya is the study of the vedic texts and other allied texts swadhyaya abhigamana idya swadhyaya then yoga yoga and one more upadana 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 is it is uh, interpreted in a different ways one interpretation is you should not possess anything so in, uh, in the case of uh, swami vedanta deshika it is mentioned that he used to live by unchavritti so he will take a small vessel that small vessel should it should actually uh the it should uh, be so small that only one days rice the rice for <coughs> filling the stomach <laughs> that is required for filling the stomach for one day only should fill fit in that uh, vessel so he he used to take that vessel it is called as unchavritti and uh, chanting the name of the supreme lord he will actually go in the road so one person will call him and he will give rice that is that can fit into that small vessel only probably if two people are there about 200 to 250 grams of rice is sufficient so he will not stock any rice or anything else for that matter that is not required for leading his life and only generally they used to have two or three sets of dhotis that is we call it as one pair this is the uttariya and adhariya that is the upper garment and the lower garment they are actually for all the grihasthas or householders they should be worn together only so two or three maximum sets of dhotis they will have nothing more than that so leading a life with that is what is known as upadana in sanskrit one interpretation then of course yoga is meditation so these are the 
పంచ పంచకాల స్కార్డింగ్ టు పాంచరాత్ర థాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ ఫర్ దట్ yes so i think uh, there are no any other questions so we can continue next week again so with the mangala shloka we will conclude <coughs> అచేద్రామానుజేత్యేషా చతురా చతురక్షరీ కామవస్థాం ప్రపద్యంతే జంతవోహంతమాదృశ పుణ్యాంభోజ వికాసాయ పాపధ్వాంతక్షయాయ శ్రీమానావిరభూద్భూమౌ రామానుజ దివాకర వినీకృతవిరించారి నిరంకుశ విభూతయ రామాంజపదాంభోజ సమాశ్రేణ శాలిన